Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at an overview workflow on how to take a rather generic audio converted to animation in uh, a MetaHuman animator and convert that into well, something a little more dramatic like this. You never did know when to walk away. So in this video, I'm really going to be focusing on this as an overview rather than a full step-by-step -step process. Uh, but if you feel like this warrants a full step-by-step -step walkthrough of everything that went into this, uh, feel free to say so in the comments. Now, I also have already created a tutorial on how to convert an audio file into a animation for a metahuman. So I'll link to that video in the description so that uh, you can get this far uh, without us having to cover that in this video. Instead, we're going to use this as the starting point where you end up going to metahuman animator, exporting the animation, and ultimately putting that onto the timeline. Uh, but then we want to get a little bit further than this and, um, well, you know, get this to be a little more dramatic. So I'm going to mute the audio here. Um, Jason Spisak is the actor that uh, delivered this dialogue for the Netflix series Arcane. Highly recommended. Um, and I'm just kind of using what I can learn from the art animation masters over at Fortiche to, to kind of up my own animation game a bit here. So um, I, of course I cheated and used the audio conversion to get a lot of the, the lip sync itself and really just focused on tuning up the facial performance, the body performance, and tried to match essentially what uh, the folks at Fortiche did. So how did we do that? Well, um, we have the audio file already imported in, and I just uh, did a, a just an audio recording for that, and I did a cell phone recording of the show and so I could get frames of that animation. And then I brought that in as a image sequence. So this is uh, image source uh, from media. So m image media source right here. And uh, this points to the folder that has these frames that I captured um, it, with a cell phone uh, of the series. I, I don't have the ability to scrape a, a Netflix show. And I hope I don't get dinged for this because I, this is really focusing on the educational content. But um, that gives me this texture then that I can use as reference. So in my outliner, for example, in the background here, uh, there isn't much going on in, in the scene. If I go to window and viewports and, and open up a second viewport, uh, basically you can see that there isn't much going on. We have uh, three lights. There's a light providing our, our shoulder highlight. There's a fill light giving us a little bit more light on our character's face. And then there is a spotlight in the background Background that's giving us kind of this cone of light behind the character. Um, there is a volumetric height fog for that spotlight to catch, and there is a Niagara system environmental fog. And I think this is from the uh, Realistic Starter Pack, which I believe is a uh, free pack on Fab. And uh, I have it. it I'm, I know I got it for free. I just can't remember if it was an old free for the month or if it's uh, still available free. So you can look for realistic Niagara or Niagara realistic starter and uh, you should be able to find that. But um, back to this image sequence here, I have a uh, 2D plane that has that image sequence applied. And in my sequencer, I've added a media track. And that media track is basically pulling up that walk away PNG, assigning it to the media texture. And that way, as I scrub through my frames here, I can reference the Fortiche animation and uh, basically learn from the, uh, the masters there in terms of how they animated this character's head, try and mimic that to the best of my meager abilities, and uh, learn from that along the way. So again, in my case, most of the animation around the mouth is generated from the audio file. I did want to get the uh, head motion uh, applied. And so that is, of course, just coming in from the MetaHuman control rig uh, where I keyframe animated for this motion. So if, for example, I search for head in my sequencer, you could see that on the head control, I just have a very few uh, number of keyframes and, and I'm just trying to, to learn from uh, the original animation there. Um, some really great uh, work on there. Also, you'll see that um, if I go ahead and disable, 
all of the animation work that I did. Let me just deactivate this. You can show you that what this looked like initially with just the audio animation, right? So I would disable the face control board, and now this is the body motion that I added, but this is the original animation from the MetaHuman animator. So you can see it's not at all as expressive. It's very symmetrical. Um, the eyes are symmetrical. And um, if I also deactivate the keyframing that was done in the control rig, you know, then, then this is just that basic animation. So the first thing I did was use the body control rig and uh, just set up a few keyframes to, to get some head and neck motion. In this case, I have them lean forward a little bit as well um, you know I think I've, I'm probably not as nuanced as the experts at Fortiche but I have um, you know tried to do a little bit in there and so how do we get the facial animations well with the metahuman animator animation on the metahuman face you can right click on face and choose bake to control rig and then choose the face control board and what that'll do is copy all of this animation let me just click elsewhere, uh, onto the face control board. And that gives you individual keyframes to work with. So most of these keyframes are the ones that came straight out of MetaHuman Animator. But you can see on the jaw, I did a little bit of tweaking. There's a, there's a few frames that are removed, and I, I added a few frames. Um, also in the eyes, if I search for eye, you can see that in a lot of cases I deleted out all the keyframes from the MetaHuman Animator and then inserted my own keyframes where I wanted to add a little bit of nuance. So if I turn this back on, now you can see that you know we've got a little more expression. I've got his face crunched up a little bit, trying to do a little more with the eyebrows and also um, you know just a little more articulate with the mouth. One of the other things I did do in terms of the mouth, for example, is um, animated the, the sticky lips. So, uh, you know, our, our lips kind of stick together when we press them together. That isn't uh, animated by default in the MetaHuman animator at this point. Uh, so anytime, you know, I saw him like push his lips together, I would go ahead and activate the sticky lips and then reduce that value as the jaw and uh, mouth opened up so that we get that, that hint of uh, the lips sticking together. So those are the kinds of things that I kind of added in here. And of course, when it comes to the eye, especially the left eye, so if I type in I here and the left eye is L underscore I so th this is the left eye I wanted the the lower eyelid to uh, hang open like this character here and so that's where this uh, left eye eyelid down here is set to a negative one to kind of force that open and that stays open throughout um, also the animator for the original shot uh, had a performance decision where uh, the eyes are looking off to one side and then of course there's a blink before looking forward again I might be a little slow on my eye movement. This I, I should probably dart a little bit faster. Uh, but at any rate, you get the idea of where I could go into the uh, blink. You know, just again, I'll search for blink. And uh, blink. There we go. And so added keyframes to, to match. So again, this is the right eye. So the right eye blinks closed and then uh, he looks up. And again, yeah, I'm, now that I'm looking at it a little more closely, I, I'm, I think I need to speed that up. Uh, one last little note is that I did very, very deliberately position this uh, rectangular light that's in front of uh, the character or just off to the side. I think it's the, the light that's giving this highlight. Let's get rid of the background and uh, go back to viewport and viewport two. And you can see, I think it's this light, this rectangle light in the right there, if I remember correctly. No, it's this one, All right? So this light here, if I deactivate that, that's uh, causing this glint. And, and so the, the position of this is very specifically uh, chosen to give this kind of fortiche eye glint. Um, I think there is a, another way of getting that arcane fortiche eye glint into the uh, metahuman eyes using uh, an alteration to the, the eye material itself by actually adding the glints, effectively painting them in. Uh, and, and that could be something to explore later. But for now, I just carefully positioned that light so that at the end of the shot, we were getting that, that fortiche 
teach glint in the eye. And so that is basically it. Again, the scene is very simple. Uh, the core magic in terms of being able to get more expression and asymmetry and, and direct control over the animation is to uh, apply the animation to the face as in the original tutorial, but then right click on that face uh, track overall, bake to the face board control rig here, and then that gives you all the keyframes and the ability to edit them uh, to your heart's content and uh, get a much better performance. So I hope this helps, and until next time, have fun.